Hi again, everyone. This video is sponsored by contribution from Linda, and here is her story. Ali, first, of course, thank you for myself and all of us that couldn't quite put the puzzle pieces together until I heard your channel. Here's my life, and I feel, and feel free to use my name. Going anonymously isn't standing up to the monster and its flying monkeys. At the age of 48, I fell in love for the first time, and I have loved and been married to my daughter's father, but not in love. We had been divorced for 15 years. Then I met Kevin when I was 48 and fell in love for the first time in my life. Everyone said we should have been together from the beginning. Our interests were the same in that he was a horseman and I come from and am part owner in a 36 acre cattle ranch that has been in my family for four generations. He felt entitled to it. All right, the first thing you got to look out for at when you're older in your late 40s and you got money is these gigolos coming in and looking to set up camp. Okay, and there's usually red flags of it right at the beginning, looking at, you know, looking for the money. I had an aunt pass away shortly before we met and I was supposed to be be her, an heir to 1.7 million. But because of the timing of her death and estate taxes at the rate of 45%, I and the other heirs are still trying to get our inheritance because it was all in ranch land. His little ranch was foreclosed on and he thought if, if he married me, it would solve his financial problems. <clears throat> A gigolo, of course. This is what you got to look out for. And what they look for, they look for women like yourself who have who not necessarily who haven't been in relationships or haven't been married and who haven't really been in love. They're looking for that. They're seeking it. Or women who are just desperate for love. Now, I'm not saying you were desperate for love, but if you never had it before and it's something new, that's what he's looking for. When it didn't, he was furious at me and did the most horrible, torturous things to me. He is so twisted and he is so twisted. He thought this would make him look good. So when he divorced me, he would be the good guy. First thing he did five months after we got married was lie to a judge and say I threatened to burn his place down. He filed a restraining order on me on December 29th but didn't have it served until January 2nd because I had to go to court on December 31st on December 31st for the estate and and he thought I was going to be getting some money. When the sheriff came to the door I started to answer it but he said it was his son and he would get it. Needless to say I was beyond devastated and had no clue what was going on. I had never dealt with the law before. Two de deputies escorted me to my car and watched me leave while he sat, and sat at the kitchen table and watched with a smirk on his face. Two weeks later, we got back together because I was going to sell my, going to sell my house that I've owned for 20 years so I could get him out of the foreclosure. But he was so far in debt that, that even that wasn't enough. Okay, what you got to understand is what the, these, these, these people, whether they be men or women, the ones after the money, the gold diggers, the gold diggers, they are good. They know how to use the law. They know how to set you up. They know how to blindside you. Okay, and you said you went back to him two weeks later because he put himself in a pat what he felt was a power position to control you. This entire, and I know this sucks, but and I'm sure you realize this already, this entire relationship was a gold digger after your money looking for you to solve his problems. Again, making him even more enraged at me and wanting out of the marriage that he was willing to to do unbelievable things like call my family and can and convince them that I was unstable that I needed to be in a lockdown facility my sister daughter and Kevin took me to the facility and tried to make me check in when the doctor interviewed me he asked me if I wanted to hurt myself or anyone else I said no his answer was you can't stay here and sent me out 
Of course, Kevin was mad again, and he thought he would at least get conservatorship over my estate, and he could get divorced and still look like the poor husband that had a crazy wife who he had to have locked up. When he finally did file for divorce, he had the paperwork drawn up the day before I went into knee surgery because I tore my meniscus in both knees and was in a wheelchair. He pretended to be the loving husband and was there during the surgery. The next day, he and his mother went out of state to buy property and I was supposed to be served divorce papers the finally day, following day. He wanted his dirty work done while he was gone and I was in recovery from surgery. Again, picking your weak points. Picking your weak points to strike. He gave the processor the wrong address and I wasn't served for two months. In the meantime, he was back from his trip and took me out for our anniversary dinner. He never said a thing about filing for divorce or, or he and his mama looking for out-of-state property. He did a horrible character smear campaign in court. Ali, this is just the very tip of the icebergs, uh, iceberg of things he did. It took me years to wrap my brain around that, around all that he did, this, that he did this all intentionally because he was such a coward. I still, I, I'm still having a hard time fathoming, fathoming anyone is so evil and has so many people fooled. He remarried a woman with lots of money that is quite a bit older than him. I sent a donation to you and I truly hope Others will get on the ball and do the same. I can't tell you how much we lose as subscribers to your channel if you're no longer on YouTube. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. Regards, Linda Manassas. Linda P. Well. These gold diggers are, and they're everywhere, they're everywhere, and it's it's not you know it's not only women; it's men too. Men are gigolos, women are gold diggers. This happens all the time. But notice the planning of this operation. Notice the depths of planning that this guy went through to keep you on edge, so you don't know what's coming. Unfortunately, the gold digger never loves you. It's always about the money with the gold digging narcissist and it's only goes to show you that he moved and who did he probably pick this up from who was his right hand mommy mommy 48 years old still traveling out of state with mommy hmm sounds like a son husband to me sounds like a son husband to me well i definitely want to hear more of the story and where it went um, I have concern why he was able to convince your your sister and daughter so easily. I mean, that would make me kind of want to dig a little deeper into what's going on with you, why you were so susceptible to this guy to begin with, why you were never in love in 48 years. So there's a lot more to your story, Linda, that I'd like to hear. But this guy... This guy is nothing but, nothing but a gold digger, and he's after the money. And they pre-plan, they calculate. Every move this guy did was calculated. Calculated for control, calculated for maximum effect, and maximum benefit for himself. So, thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your story. I hope it helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up a Skype chat or private phone call, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.